Nou jongens, die paar is wel gewoon lekker te visueren. Hoe dat is gekomen. Nou, zij was eigenlijk um, op vakantie. Uh, gewoon een trip en dan zouden ze lekker vakantie vieren in Ierland. En dan kwam ik daar in contact eigenlijk. Mijn naam is Melissa Galladé. En het leuke daarvan was, um, hier iemand ze gaan, die ik dan ken in Amerika. En daar hebben we eigenlijk een paar voorgesteld. En ze was bekend dat ze in de eerste gaan, dus ze zei van, oh, een guy in Holland. Dat wilde wel helpen. Het is uh, te gek, nou ik bedoel, we doen echt hetzelfde. En we hebben een, uh, echt dezelfde passie. En dat is gewoon een mens van de hand. Kennis van de en ik vond het terug te dringen van bepaalde aandoeningen of zo. Nou, dat is natuurlijk uh, zo gepassioneerd dat ze gewoon zijn dat ze dat ook niet kunnen komen. Dus ik kan niet iets geven. Dat ze steeds meer moeten gesproken worden. Dus um, zodoende. En zij is een, een nutritional pharmacist. Dat is eigenlijk op zich gezegd, zij is een apotheek. Dus alles wat met medicatie is, gebruikt met medicatie. Kun je ook gewoon alles vragen. En als je dan uh, zoiets hebt van uh, de afvoering, dat is ook heel goed. Maar ze heeft wel de kennis van eigenlijk uh, de kant waar ze niet meer verkiest, maar wel als een afdeling. Dat is een holiday. Thanks everyone, really happy to be here. And I did understand a little bit of what Rudy said, but just for those of us, how I would introduce myself is I like to say I'm a nutritional pharmacist, which is a pharmacist with a passion for nutrition. And one of the things I don't I know you probably personally know some apothecas in your life. Do you have any family or friends that are um, apothecas that work in the pharmacy field? Anybody? No? Okay. Well, one of the cool things they know, in addition to they learn about how drugs work in the body, they also learn about how the body works with drugs. So they naturally learn physiology and nutrition um, because the biochemistry of the body actually works through nutrients. And what that means to me is the innate chemistry that's in the body, there's innate little molecules that are in your bloodstream, and your body um, grabs them and utilizes them to repair and regenerate. So like right now we're sitting here, we're breathing, we're digesting food, uh, we, you know, I'm talking, so there's all these reactions going on inside of me right now to allow me to do that. None of that would be possible if I didn't have certain uh, innate biochemical pieces in me, if you will. So things like amino acids, um, vitamins, minerals, uh, if they weren't in my body, I, I, would, I would cease to exist. And so one of the great things about my studies is I learned about biochemistry naturally, because we learn about the chemistry of the body, and then I also learned about pharmaceutical agents. And one of the things that happened, I, I practiced for 15 years, in a far, and in America, you know, we, we sell a lot of medications. And I would sell anywhere, dispense and inter interact with anywhere between three to 800 people a day, three to 800 patients a day and I would go over all their medications and we would talk about things. And over the years I would notice that these people would just get sicker and sicker and sicker. They weren't getting better and they had come into the medical profession or to the doctor for help with whatever was going on and 99% of the time I wouldn't actually see the issues being resolved. One or two things would happen. They would develop another condition or they would end up having to be on a drug, quote unquote, for life. So for example, rheumatoid arthritis, there's a lot of injectable medications. Uh, they're, they're known as anti-inflammatory, really strong, potent immune modulators, and they literally suppress the immune system. So then you don't have any sort of autoimmune issue like rheumatoid arthritis or um, lupus or particularly rheumatoid arthritis. I know a lot of friends that are on medications for that. So they have to take that medication indefinitely, and if they stop taking it, their condition flares up. And if you understand a little bit about physiology and biochemistry, it's kind of like, well, what's the point? You know, why are we just, you know, we're supposed to work within the paradigm of the body, so why, why is this not, you know, it doesn't seem to be working. And uh, through all of that process and my own learning and, and, you know, my own struggles, I really arrived to the side that now works with the nutrients, so working within your innate body chemistry to work and, and, and rebalance yourself. And um, so whenever we have something going on, if we have a, a rash or a headache or an illness, uh, itchy skin, bad eyesight, those are all signals that we're not we're not nutrient properly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.
in, 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 in context. Ja. Als je iets wil weten, dus zo dan steek gewoon even hand op een, een, een weggekeerd snel uit hoor. Dat is jammer zelf. Maar ik kan het niet zo terug zeggen. Uh, nee, maar je met, ja. met context snap je. Het heeft over de hoofdpijn en de hoofdziektes en bla bla bla. Ja. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good. 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 Great. Good. So, uh, yeah, so just um, your body is your best hint and guidance to what's going on. And a lot of us get used to in our culture, uh, for example, I get sick every year. You'll hear that. Like every year of the spring, I get sick. That's cold season. It's flu season. Um, you know, four times a year, the kids break on something you know, from the preschool and I'm going to get sick. That, that's not that's not actually accurate. That's not, your body doesn't have to do that. So if you're nutriated, your body, your immune system is just strong enough and you'll just be healthy. And historically, we, we foraged more. We ate different kinds of foods. We were getting nutrient sources. Nowadays, the whole um, food industry, usually it's one chain, one food supply chain. For example, in the United States, we have Cisco Foods. You'll see that truck everywhere. It doesn't matter what restaurant you're at. You'll turn around and behind that restaurant Food. So, yeah, in the okay. States it's Cisco. I, excuse me, I'm not sure what you guys might have, but do you know Kraft Foods, like KRAFT? That's a really big company in the States. What's a popular brand here? Yeah, that okay. what's it? Is, is, that produces massive amounts Nestle? of food. Nestle? Do you know Nestle? Yeah, Nestle. Yeah. Nestle, yeah. Nestle yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a global food company, and they produce food and they have factories all over. So the point is, wherever they're getting that, that was both that the raw ingredients. They're definitely using our, our, our um, uh, help, help me out, agricultural farming. Oh, hello, hello, hi. Hi. Agricultural farming techniques, you know, they're using artificial chemicals to make the yield big, but there's no nutrients. Yeah. We just don't know, right? Because we're not part of the process, so we don't know what they're growing or how they're growing it. <coughs> so again, the corporate food chain is something you got to think about. So you're not getting your nutrients. And then you also, um, you know, you've got to get those nutrients. Like we said, the biochemistry needs all those little things. If we're not, if we don't have all those little things in our blood, we're not able to repair and regenerate inside. So when we look at where we're getting our food, and, and FYI, again, like I said, it's a global thing now. There's global companies, Nestle. We all know that name. We just, we're discussing, like, which one do we all know? And Nestle is known. So those guys are, you know, wherever they're making it, it comes in. You don't know what you're getting. So in 2017, to know what you're getting, you do need to supplement and that's been really an ongoing thing way before 2017, but at this point in the game, knowing what we know about biochemistry, we do need to supplement. Because what you're doing by supplementing, getting all those that spectrum that we're talking about, right? The minerals, the vitamins, the essential fatty acids, um, the amino acids, you're getting, you know you're covering your basis and you're allowing your body just to do the basic repairing and regenerating. Now, in excessive trauma, you know, you get in a car accident, have Bed or you, um, you know, I don't know, you just get overwhelmed or stressed, you know, you're getting more nutrients to, to help you rebuild and regenerate. So, so those are just, that's kind of the big picture of what I do. And the truth is, is that pharmaceutical drugs and the modern medical model and chronic disease doesn't actually address any of the, um, it's not really solving any problems. It's not go to a doctor, 95% of the time what they're giving us is for a chronic condition. All it's doing is changing the outside external condition, like changing your laboratory values maybe, or taking the rash away, but it doesn't really address, you still have that inflammation, you still have that response that's going on underneath that you just now can't see. So it's actually, uh, honestly, detrimental. There are, ex the one exclusion I do like to say, I love acute medicine, I love what we can do emergency, like, you know, one of us have a heart attack right now, the odds are we could uh, save each other and you know everything would be okay and we'd get stabilized in the hospital. That's amazing, that's a miracle. Yeah. But chronic conditions, type 2 diabetes, completely reversible. Uh, high blood pressure, completely reversible. Um, asthma, you can definitely do a lot to control the symptoms. Um, what else? Um, rheumatoid arthritis, arthritis. Uh, dementia, I've, had, I've seen patients beginning to start to lose memory and cognitive function, and I'll immediately start working with them, mostly clean water, which you guys have pretty clean water in this country, but in yeah. America we have really bad water. Um, we've talked about that, which has been fun, but um, you know, I'll just work with that, I'll get them on some nutrients and some clean water, and boom, I mean, they're, 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 their cognitive fun function returns.
discuss that with you guys and see how I can help you. So, uh, yeah, so questions, anybody, you know, when I graduated in 1999, it said that type 2 diabetes wasn't reversible, and that's not true. We now know that in the United States, we have a thing called the Center for Disease Control, the CDC, and we now print literature that says uh, type 2 diabetes are the changes that are coming and they're slow and then for an example CDC now says that you know this major top-line organization this national organization but then at the same time I called the doctor in Kansas just to do some networking and I just was like hey you know type 2 diabetes is reversible and we were just having a, a conversation among peers and, and he actually said to me uh, no I did not know type 2 diabetes is reversible so yeah so the, the information it takes a while to get out there, it's just the way the nature of a very large system. When you're working in a really large medical system, you you have to watch out for that. Yeah. And then back to the food chain, I was the main the main take home is that when we're using large corporate structures to provide food for us, we do not know what nutrients are in there. So you pretty much, especially considering that they're within the art, um, agricultural industry and they're using artificial chemicals and stuff, the odds are it's just not it's not nutrient dense. Versus if we were to grow a little garden over there and put compost in it and we'd know that we'd be getting some minerals and, and we'd be getting nutrients in too so um, that's why processed foods we have to you know they're just not the first option so working isn't, local isn't it the best to, to eat uh, as much as you can uh, biological definitely local yeah, yeah. you mean to best? eat whole foods yeah <coughs> for sure as, as much as possible, as possible. oh yes yeah. that, that always beats any processed foods yeah. for sure but can't be assured that the supplementation is in there. Yeah. So, and what I mean by that is you can't be assured that the, you know, the 60 essential minerals, the 16 essential vitamins, the 12 essential amino acids, the three to four essential fatty acids are in there. You just you can't be sure of that. Even people that eat, and I've ate clean most of my life. I mean, I know I've had, I know I was, I've gotten sick before, you know, and, and I, um, one of the other, I got sick because, um, I ate gluten and I was allergic mm -hmm. to gluten and I didn't know. And so gluten was interfering with my ability to absorb nutrients. I was allergic to it, so I was constantly having an allergic reaction. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, my mucosal lining was getting worn down and uh, there was always, uh, my gut got worn down and I developed an ulcer. And then I developed irritable bowel syndrome and then I developed hypothyroidism and then I started losing my hair all in my oh. early 30s. Oh. And I was really sick. And when I went to the doctor, she said, well, you know, you might be gluten intolerant. And this is me back in the day. And I said, well, what does that mean? And she said, well, you can't eat wheat flour. And I said, well, I can still eat bread, right? And she was like, no. And I was like, well, I mean, just like crazy lady. Like, this lady's just crazy. Like, she said, I can't eat bread. And then, and then I said, well, I can still eat pasta. And she was like, no. I mean, I was so into wheat. I worked at uh, Italian restaurants. And I loved wheat. And I loved everything, sourdough, all that. So it was a huge change about two years to really get, get it out of my life and then my hypothyroidism lasted another uh, three years and then um, I just one day I was running some labs and I came back positive you know negative and clean mm -hmm. and I just kind of moved on from there and, um, I do occasionally eat gluten on very special occasions but I really try not to eat it just because it, it causes a lot of problems for me and 99% of the time when I meet somebody in the pharmacy and they're inflamed or they're all just saying hey why don't you just try it? You know, just give it up. See if your rash goes away. See if the aches and pains, especially arthritis. I, I can't say how many times people will do it, and they'll call me two weeks later and be like, "Wow, it's it's night and day." So those would be the take homes. You know, supplementing and you know not eating gluten. It's usually 99% of the time to call for it. And doing the best we can to eat clean, shop local, grow our own food, and you know alleviate suffering. Part of the game plan. It doesn't feel you know, a horrible, painful existence. That's not, it doesn't need to be like that. So if you guys know anybody that's suffering like that, I would be honored if you would connect me to them because I'd, I'd at least want to expose them to this information. So, yeah. Because the more this, like, Body's absorbing it too, like even more so because she said 
what's, what's even before that get away from the gluten and not that everybody's actively maybe allergic but it is the very first step to create new habits mm -hmm. I know when I throw down on pasta or whatever like I kind of have bad bad knees mm -hmm. and like if I do in my family we eat we get together we cook you know if, but if I have a weekend of that then all of a sudden it's like you know my <laughs> joints get stiff and the versus all through the week when I eat cleaner food like salad Moderation, of course, is everything, but I just really appreciate that she, her point always is clean nutrition. No matter what, where you get it from, that is the goal if you want to, if you want to feel good. Okay. So does anyone know anyone that has um, arthritis or high blood pressure or diabetes, type 2 diabetes? Yeah. 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 Would you be willing to try for an experiment the 90 essential nutrients? Give it like um, three months, you know, at least a month and see what happens because, and then not try to not eat gluten and just to see because that's, you know, it would be a fun experiment for me to see because a lot of times the minerals, you know, they rebalance everything. And another thing I want to say about high blood pressure, um, even if your labels are your levels are high, that doesn't really mean as much as we like to think it does. But, but what it is is how you feel. Like if you get dizzy or if you're having problems, then, then that means it could be an issue for you. But some of us just might run kind of high. But shortness of breath, dizziness, um, you know, lack of energy, those are things that then we know, you know, the doctors start looking. There's high blood pressure also uh, it can it result in like headaches. Yes. Yeah. 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 And uh, and high blood pressure too. You know, if your vasculature isn't strong and you do have that high blood pressure, then you you know you might be losing some sort of aneurysm or stroke. Yeah. Yeah. And that's normal, you guys. That's tear down, right? Because we're not repairing. And you know, this is just the truth. It's, it's kind of gross, but as we age. What actually ends up happening, you know, the inflammation, like the swelling of the elbow and the swelling of the brain and the dementia and the, the mucus in the lungs and the constant br bronchitis. And, you know, we all know, we have, we've seen friends get old like that. It's actually, a, what it is really, it's a melting of the body. And what that means is there's no repair. So there's no the vasculature isn't getting repaired and like stabilized like little, you know, brick on brick and, and, and everything's staying segregated. So we actually literally, as we die in age, we melt melts on the inside and we even melt on the outside that's the wrinkles too so when she's talking about it <laughs> when she's talking about um, you know high blood pressure you know my only concern if she was 22 and it was a little high I probably wouldn't be you know I'd kind of be maybe a little mm -hmm. slide I'd still want that person on nutrients because I know what nutrients they do but at the same time I'd let it slide but if you're at an age where you know I wouldn't want that because you're, you're you know you have weak it's just natural I say don't get too hung up on laboratory values because we do put way too much emphasis on that globally. Um, it's really about how people feel, but nevertheless, that's my two cents on that. Yeah. And any other questions? Yeah, um, like I don't know how you, um, I don't know how to pronounce it, but we call it like, there's what, like a tree of uh, flesh, flesh tree. Mm -hmm. uh, in the womb. And it's in the uterus. Yes, yeah. keep going. Like, um, uh, like growing up, like, I don't know. Uh, yeah, fibroids. fibroids. Yes, yes. Okay, great. So there are extra flesh uh, little things growing inside the uterus. 
Yeah. yeah, it's not out. Yeah. It's not out. It's inside yeah. the uterus. Yeah. yeah and sometimes they can be growing on the uterus. whole uterus. But in the so you took it out. Yeah. But okay. it's also a thing it, that's uh, in the in the family. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's a thing oh, that yeah. runs in the family. Yeah. Got it. Number one thing with fibroids is sugar. But do you stop fibroids? Yeah, I'm a two now. The four, we have the four yeah, the yeah. You have no uterus, so. You have the four, 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 the Doctors out there and, and scientists that have correlated this huge rise in 
diabetes, and a lot of other weirdo diseases that took off. And, and there's, I know for a fact there's four. I mean, I can just see it. And if you study the biochemistry of it, it's like, it's all over it. So, you know, hey, if you're going to eat, again, go back to what Grandpa and Grandma did 60 years ago. They ate sugar. That's fine. Put a teaspoon of sugar in your coffee if you have to. That's fine. But at least your body knows how to break that down and use it as an energy source. So, yeah. But, but my grandparents were more active than we are nowadays. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's also a difference. Yes. Yeah. They have TV all day long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hard work. On the couch. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. And yeah. It's a difference. But your stories of your life, all the other people, your really old people, were like, uh, like 20, 30 years ago, you, you hear stories about, okay, that guy, he, he just died in his sleep, but the guy was never sick. You know? mm. Right. And yeah. then he just went away in his sleep. You don't hear it anymore. Right. Right. Because the most of yeah. everybody went is, is is going to the doctor, had seen the doctor. Right, yeah. and yeah. dies in the hospital. Yeah. Most people. Yeah. 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 But so yeah. that's our rare stories now. Yeah. But yeah. I think when I was twenty years old, uh, fifteen you still hear that story because the in the the nutrient dense food was, you know, back in the 50s, it was still 60s, still nutrient dense. Yes, yes. And the generation that was blessed mm -hmm. enough to have, you know, be raised in the 1940s, 50s culture, where meals were still cooked at home, and you had that. Like my mom was born in 47, and she remembers when McDonald's came into being, and they that was very rare. I mean, McDonald's mm -hmm. was, you know, yeah. once that a year. And it was real yeah. meat, and it didn't yeah, have corn syrup in it, and you know, and you how much they paid, and lots of money, yeah. and, yeah. the, uh, and, the, and the cheap products. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you guys just, you know, you're you're in charge. You know, you're yeah. running your ship, yeah. and and you need to be, you know, alert and educated, and that's what it's about. And and there's so much to learn. I mean, nowadays, all this information, everything I'm saying, you can find on YouTube, and you can also reach me. Um, I'm available on a bunch of different social platforms, but nutritional pharmacist is the main way to reach me, and of course through Rudy Pricka, and yeah, so I think I think we'll end that portion, and then, um, yeah, go ahead and wrap up, unless there's any more questions. What's that, I'm saying? It's about three numbers or something, yeah. so they close it up, you see. Can you have to talk between the two, it means enema, bishop now is over. Okay, uh, that's the thing we uh, hear that this is what we are here, part of the plan. Can you uh, uh, take or get too much vitamins in the body? And is it dangerous? No, it's not. It's not. Yeah, because <laughs> when it was a daughter of hers, she said, uh, uh, so because, you know, my urine was totally yellow. You know. Right, and that's fine. You want. Yeah, not for me from uh, my. Uh, Doctor. Yeah. Your doctor said that? Doctor. No. Daughter. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah. So, no. Yeah. No, no, no. That's good. That means you're excreting extra vitamins. That means vitamins are even in your urinary tract where vitamins are also utilized and grabbed and minerals are grabbed all over every part. Every part where fluids touch your body, there's little things that could grab a, a mineral or a, an amino acid. And, and no. No. The, the, let me explain. The way to do that, is it possible? Yes, but I would have to strap you down and I would have to get injectable uh, fatty vitamins like A and E and K and I would literally have to inject them into your vein to make that happen. So no, that it is impossible. Now could you be some person that could do it? Yes, but you guys, that's not gonna happen. Aardig zal worden gespoten en dan op zo'n hoge dosis, uh, maar dat, dat, dat wordt niet aan haast, de generatie niet aan, wordt blootgesteld. Toen is het zo van, dat gene, dat betekent juist dan, dat je lichaam uh, goed afstelt. Nee, goed is bevoorraad van alle stoffen, dat het zelfs je urine uitkomt. Als het niet ja. je urine uitkomt, dan is het, het nog, is het in je lichaam en is het er niet zoveel in dat het ook nog kan worden uitgescheiden, snap je? Dus het is juist, je wil juist dat je urine geel is, maar dan weet je in ieder geval zeker dat... Ja, ja, ja één, alle ook. vitamines die je te veel inneemt, die plas je gewoon uit. Ja, ja klopt. Ja. Ja. Maar dan heb je dus eigenlijk gezegd dat juist van, oké, okay, 
Daar waar het nodig ja. is, daar komt het nu ook. Ja, wat de over is, gaat gewoon weer weg. Kijk, en heb je, wie, wie heeft wel eens een vitaminepil genomen? Gewoon, en, uh, en, oh, en ja, nood, ja, ja, ja. Had je dan ook oh, een gele plas ja, of wat dan ook? Nee, ja. Uh, Oh, nee, ook alweer. Ik denk niet meer. Oh, dat ik alweer Nee, ook. Nee, super niet. Oh, magnesium. 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 We talked, we started about that, and yes. then it uh, is it opgenomen as content. We, we also record that about mm -hmm. bioavailability. Mm -hmm. You know, that's also a thing, you know. Um, um, are you able to you know, absorb all your nutrients? And I think it's a yeah, well, so, it's a yeah. so that's also a thing. Um, most of the people even can uh, fully absorb all the nutrients in the, in, in the intestines. Mm -hmm. dus de meeste mensen kunnen niet eens 100 procent... Ah, kom lekker erbij, man. Nee, 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 ik moet gewoon even gewoon even dus het water. Nee, nee, voor jou. Of een marietje. De meeste mensen kunnen niet eens genoeg eigen nutrients opnemen in het lichaam, want omdat de darm een paar keer toch niet een paar keer minder dan 50 procent is. Zo. Dus dan zou je eigenlijk, omdat het voedsel al veel minder voedingsstof uh, heeft, meer moeten eten, maar je kunt minder opnemen door het soort voedsel wat ze gewoon zijn te eten, als niet zo in de Oh, dat geeft mij een hè? She has a question. How about the uh, lactic uh, acid? Uh, Oké, okay. lactose intolerance. Ja. En dat is. Heb je al eens met stoppen die je darmen weer beter kunt laten werken? Nou, het uh, gaat over uh, bepaalde dingen waar je wel eens een keer. Ja, ik ben een Ja, so probiotics, no food. I'm going to help you. Good, good, great. And just stay away from what you can't eat right now because you know that. And then how easy that. Ik sta met uh, uh, Melissa in, uh, in contact en uh, ik kan haar gewoon bellen en we kunnen een paar, dat is ook bij 
geleerd en uh, exchanging, we wisselen, ja, zeg maar, ja. uitwisselen, uh, uh, aandoeningen uh, die we krijgen, zeg maar. En hoe zij daarmee daar om zou gaan als een apotheker, want ik vraag me bijvoorbeeld van, oké, okay, maar wat, <lacht> wat zou je dan beter niet kunnen eten bijvoorbeeld met een bepaald soort medicijn? Ja. Dat sommige dingen remmen, een bepaald medicijn, het kan gewoon voedsel zijn, het kan gewoon... Uh, nou, ik wil naar de dokter, ja. ik weet niet wat ik krijg een beetje rum daar. Oké. She wants to go to the doctor because she has like rheumatic pain, you know, a rum... Uh, rheumatic pain. Rheumatic pain. Yeah, and so, you know, the first thing I tell people, and I, you know, I used to see three to eight hundred people a day, and if, I, hey. if you told me you would have had rheumatoid arthritis, I would have said, don't eat gluten for two weeks. Okay. No gluten. Yep, and it's in everything. It's in salad dressing. All a bit minder, since really uh minder uh and it's in salad dressings, it's in mayonnaise. What's the word for mayonnaise? Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. About a month ago we quit uh, drinking milk because my daughter every morning she was throwing up slime sli yeah, sli yeah, yeah. 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 So we quit and Good. now it's gone. Good. Yeah. So number now one when is she eats cheese, it comes back. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Number one yeah. is gluten, number two is lactose. Yeah. So if I Usually I go, I try to do both with people, yeah. but if they're, you know, if I can only get them to do one, it's usually gluten. And then if they come back in two weeks and they're still hurting, then I say give up the lactose, which would be the most common. Yeah. And we have to go organic. Yeah. We just have to, yes. because what they do, it's just the truth, you guys, what they do to the cows and the weird toxins and growth form, it just makes you sick. And it makes you produce uh, m mucus yes. because, you know, it's a stress, they're under stress, so it's... And it, it, it is what it is, you know. And Rudy, can you help me? I can help you. I can help you. I can help you. I can I can help you. I can help you. I can I can I she has a question. Yes. And she has it like uh, a lot of pain, you know, in the, in the muscle, especially in the legs. And uh, uh, for, uh, for, uh, especially at night. Yeah, um, so, you know, one of the big things is what we're eating. You, you're probably eating something you're allergic to. She ate the Romani food. Nee. Ja, ja. 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 Ja, heb je daar voor medicatie gehad? Ja, ja. Oké, okay, dat weet ik niet. Oké, okay, als je medi medication yeah. for that, and after that, you know, it's just done. Mm -hmm. You had antibiotics? Ja. Yeah. So what happened is, you took the antibiotics, and it poured down on the gut, and you killed, you know, in, in our bodies, we have the bad bacteria, the sepsis bacteria, and then we also have the good bacteria, that, that's like a whole, referred to as the probiotics, when we take antibiotics, we kill the bad and we kill the good. Mm -hmm. So you, you kind of just wipe out your system. And so the thing you want to do, it's great that we have the antibiotic to kill the sepsis, but then we want to start rebuilding our system. And we do that through eating cultured foods like sauerkraut, kombuchas, um, really clean yogurts, like maybe sheep yogurt yeah. or organic. Yeah. You know, depends on the person, lacto, kefir, fermented drinks. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, okay. yeah, it's those things. Yep. Yeah. 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 Y
cider vinegar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's good. And and uh, you know, I could definitely help you with a regimen, but then the things you know, you want to avoid the processed foods, the gluten, mm -hmm. the cake, the donuts, the pizza. Because that gluten is really inflammatory right. to your yeah. body and it's, yeah. it's causing all kinds of problems. And then the sugar. <laughs> yeah, and the sugar. And I know, guess what? I know you're addicted to it and it's yeah. really hard. Right? It's really, really hard. With, uh, with addiction, like sugar addiction. You, what you do is when you every time you go to the store, you mm -hmm. just you just don't buy it. Yeah, you I just I don't know. buy it, and then you're well, and then you're still gonna freak out, one. and you're gonna go yeah. get it, but you make yourself work for it. It's not mm -hmm. just sitting in your house. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Every day, every day, every yeah. day, you gotta go to the grocery store. You gotta go to the fast food. You gotta go somewhere else to get it. Number one. Number two, you start putting things in your house that you know, like avocados. You make yourself, you're like, I want to eat that candy bar, but you eat the avocado first, okay? Because mm -hmm. it's that you might get, you might get, you might get, you, you get what you need through the avocado, and you might not want that Snickers bar after you eat the avocado, or an apple, and you just make yourself do it, and you, you go, you get support. Is there Overeaters Anonymous here? Like 12-step program? Uh -oh. Overeaters Anonymous, you know Alcoholics Anonymous, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Weight Watchers. Weight yeah, I don't like Weight Watchers. No, no, no. no. Um, there's another group, it's 12 Step, and it's like Overeaters. It's based yeah. on the 12 Step. Yeah. Okay, but we didn't check it out. Yeah. One of the things, you know, we've heard people say is it took you years yeah. to get here. Mm -hmm. So it's okay if you take baby steps. Of course, yes, yeah. ideally we want you to yeah. go in your kitchen and throw everything yeah. in the trash yeah. can. But for you, everybody's different. If there's one thing you know that, and you, because you already know in your brain that one thing that you do that you wish you didn't do anymore, start with that. And then the next week you can do another thing. And then, like for me, I decided a while back, but now I've been eating all the cheese and enjoying the whole cheese. But like, <laughs> I don't eat cheese unless it's melted. I don't oh, yeah. eat it in my okay. salad, I don't eat it on my sandwich. Because before you know it, I'm having cheese at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm -hmm. It's like, so it's a special occasion. And so you have to start s tweaking little things at a time. And then before you know it, over the course of six months, oh my gosh, I barely eat cheese anymore. And yeah. I'm feeling better or whatever. And I know that, you know, uh, it's just a realistic approach to, to start with something, make a commitment. Yeah. And then the other things will naturally start mm. coming. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 My question to you, and you can share with us, and this will help all of mm -hmm. us, is what is the first thing every morning that you eat? What's the first thing that sets your list? What is that? Is a cracker. Like a one cracker. Okay, gluten. So there we go. Eight, eight. So the what? So kind of, and more not. And middags eat I almost nothing. Afternoon, she's eating almost. What is what? What is it? Well, coffee. No, but the first thing is a cracker. Okay, yeah. so the, the coffee, but no milk. Yeah, too smart. Oh, I know. My butt is too smart. Or or the first thing, the first thing in the morning. This is gonna be. This might change the game. Is like a bunch of eggs, three or four really good eggs, beat up, and then cooked in butter, made with really good butter. And let that be the first thing you oh, eat every morning. And then after that, you can kind of piecemeal it. But when you eat, when the first thing that hits your stomach is something you're allergic to, it's really hard. And, and you're going to have to get rid of gluten, which is the cracker and probably the cheese and the sugar. The sugar. A lot of times people, it'll be sugar with the artificial sweetener stuff, that milk stuff. Straight up toxic. And if they just get rid of that artificial milk stuff, you know, the yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.
she also likes to eat candy. She we doesn't, all like candy. She doesn't so. say, but I heard from, you know, them <laughs> that they were like spies. You know, uh, and she's also doing a lot of, you know, candy. We worry about her. Yeah, she loves her. Yeah. You know, what about, do you want to try? One of the things when you're in the throes of food addiction, you having nutrients can really change your food cravings. And you trying the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, that orange drink, that can change your food cravings. And then it'll be easier for you to make a healthier choice. Just the force. Yep. So, so for some of us, sometimes the addiction's so strong, we're just really mm -hmm. not going to be able to do it just by willpower mm -hmm. or really being you know, on the ball. Mm -hmm. We might really need, you, you're hungry, you're starving, your body's starving. And if you don't feed it nutrients, you're just going to keep reaching for things that, are, you know, you hope are going to get you what you need, but, you know, they're not. So do you think you could try, like, for a month to the Beyond Tangy Tangerine? Do you, that would be a good place to start. Yeah. Yeah, and be consistent. You have to do it two times, two scoops a day, 30 days. Do not stop. You just got to keep taking it. First of all, what I did is, to be honest, in the hand, that's the hand. That's the hand. Dwingen om iets te binnen te werken. Het maakt voor dan niet uit wat het is, maar het lichaam probeert dan zelf alles eruit te halen wat het kan gebruiken. Mm. Laatst als je het beschikt. Dus, ook al heb je heel veel nutrit dus eigenlijk nodig, maar je pakt ook nog voor bepaalde dingen die, waar weinig in zit. Mm -hmm. Brok of zo. Maar dan, uh, net als een baby, als hij honger heeft, dan moet hij drinken. Maar als je hem drinken geeft, moet hij stil. Dus dat zo sport het lichaam ook. Dat is precies hetzelfde. Als wij ons lichaam geven wat het nodig heeft, gaan we niet meer zeuren. We zeuren niet meer om eten, we krijgen geen wat noemen ze cravings. Nou, ze zegt van als jij dus die, die, die BTT neemt, maar uh, dan krijg je dat minder, want dan gaat je, krijg je lichaam eigenlijk datgene wat het nodig heeft. Dan gaat het minder vragen om, dus, hè, dus het ook minder snel zin hebben in dingen die je eigenlijk niet, omdat je iets meer nodig hebt. Nee, maar ik, ik heb juist niet zoveel zin in, in die dingen. Nee. Want ik eet al bijna niks. Nee, dat is wel. Ja. Eindje? Nee, maar, uh, maar, net, ja. maar als je wel iets eet, maar als je wel iets mm -hmm. eet, ja. dat ligt aan wat je doet. Wel, hè? dat je ligt aan dat je, datgene wat je, ook al is het niet veel, maar dat wat je eet, dat dat niet oké okay is. Dan. En kijk, en dan misschien kijk je leeg nou nog een maar het kan zo dat als je het over een tijdje een probleem krijgt, erg niet. En dan heb je een paar goede dagen. Ja, en dat kijk maar nog aan die CBC hebt. Ja, het ziet er wel een beetje als een beetje weaker, like als je veel dingen hebt, zoals CBC, de hele familie hier, moet je naar het hospital gaan om de CBC te krijgen. Oh ja, dat is een beetje een beetje therapie. Because maybe it was, uh, you know, it's airborne, you say? Yes, yeah. 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 So, um, and sometimes she just falls over and then we just, yeah. Right. Yeah, just seriously, just, I mean, uh, uh, even the plant-based minerals, the shot bottle, just the minerals are going to change the game for you. And, and just, you know, and just knowing that, you know, you're here with us. And it means a lot to us that you're here, mm -hmm. and we want you to stay here. Mm -hmm. yeah, just, uh maar daar hebben we het wel over. Als kijk, dat is het leuk als de mensen dus, uh, wat meer willen weten, wat kun je doen, zeg maar, op bepaalde dingen. Nou, wij gaan sowieso, zouden wij sowieso nog gaan doen. We hebben de laatste erg druk geweest met optreden, zo. Maar, uh, okay. dan uh, heb ik voor Marie ook, wil ik ook wel even uh, een haakje met haar verder te spreken. Ja, dat mag ook netjes zeggen. Wat er dan uh, uitrolt, zeg maar. Maar voor jou, voor je reuma, ik kan ook... Uh, uh, we kunnen wat dieper op ingaan. Ik wil dat. You know yeah. the problems we have discussed tonight. I can you know, we can discuss that and yeah. maybe make a like some sort of protocol for them. For sure, for sure. Yeah. And you guys are welcome. And you know, no harm, no foul. You know, everybody falls yeah. off. You know, and all of us do, and that's part of the journey. You just pick yourself up. You know. And, um, but yeah, it's it's great. You care about her, but you also have to be respectful of her choices too, right? Like, yeah. you know, she knows yeah. what she's doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah.
<laughs> That's why it's good that we are also here. Yes. Yeah. And otherwise, maybe she died already. Okay. Yes. Would you officially close? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, thank you. No, Damis. This was uh, Melissa Galladay. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Welcome. You're welcome. Dus als jullie nog willen weten hoe ze uh, op uh, hoe ze te bereiken is, ook op de website. Nou, dat. Uh, Kun je kunt me altijd even vragen, dan kan ik het doorgeven en dit zal persoonlijk opzoeken. Dan kun je misschien ook de live dingen die ze geeft. Dat is dus ook vaak live op Facebook, uh, op bepaalde tijden. Dan kun je daar gewoon ook uh, dan kun je daar gewoon naar kijken. Dan, uh, of daarop abonneren, zeg maar. Of laten weten van nou, als zodra ze live gaat, dan wil ik dat het bekend wordt op, uh, op mijn Facebook. En dan krijg je namelijk een, een, een signaal van oké, okay, oh Melissa Golladay is live. Oh, dan kun je gewoon meekijken wat ze dan doet. Yes, please. Yeah, that would be a blast yeah. to have you guys there. And, and, and Rudy and I, we're, we might get to some cross pollinations where we can have powwows and share information. So, you know, the internets are what mm -hmm. brought Rudy and I together. Yeah. So. It's like a does. Also, Tinder brings other people together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was great. Like, um, uh, 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 zij was um, uh, iemand die ik dus kende, die via uh, Young Dignity, die kende zij ook. <coughs> en eigenlijk op die manier uh, zijn we in contact gekomen. Ja, zij is ook. Ja. Via via. Yeah. It's great. So from holiday, you know, Ireland, and then fly over to Holland. And I'm very blessed. Thank you. And uh, still amazed about what you do and with all the passion in it. It's great. Thank you, Melissa. You're welcome. Thank you.